right, so the Yankees are undefeated at home this year. They're undefeated versus the Red Sox. They're playing really great baseball. Nothing can bring me down today. Let's just see who's on the mound for tonight's game. Oh. How's it going, everybody? So the Yankees dismantled the Red Sox again last night for the second consecutive night in the Bronx, just demolishing the Red Sox shady pitching. It's just terrible. And imagine giving that big of a contract to Nathan Ovaldi. I think he got $90 million or $80 million. The dude hits a lot of bats. He did have one good postseason, but he hits a lot of bats. Uh, but last night did not come without its cost. DJ LeMayhew had an injury to his left thumb. They're calling it a sprain, but they have not released the results of his MRI yet so it could be a light sprain it could be less it could be just you know some inflammation or whatever or it could be worse he could have some kind of a ligament problem uh, I'm not going to speculate we'll just have to wait for the results from the Yankees but in 2018 he did sprain his left thumb when he was with Colorado and he missed two and a half weeks now that doesn't sound like a long time uh, but DJ, DJ LeMahieu is the Yankees' best hitter right now. He is the linchpin that holds that lineup together. He's always on base. He's always getting big hits. And he's hitting over 400. So losing him for a couple of weeks, even if that's all it is, is going to be tough to survive without losing a couple games. And in such a short season, you don't really want to lose any games that you could have won with a healthy roster. So the Yankees are bit by the injury bug. Again, I don't know what it is with this team with the injuries it's just um, it's just bad luck I don't know but uh, DJ LeMahieu is such a crucial part of this team let's just wish him well and hope that Tyler Wade can step up Tyler Wade has looked pretty good this year he's looked much better than he has in previous years I think he's been more comfortable because he made the opening day roster he actually started on opening night picked up a bunch single and he's been getting a lot of slap hits he's been looking good on defense so nice job for Tyler Wade so far I'm hoping that he can step up much in the same way that Clint Frazier has stepped up for Aaron Judge. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But you can only take so many injuries to your top-tier players before it really starts to, to affect your team in the win-loss column. And right now, I'm a little concerned because that's Stanton, that's Judge, and that's LeMahieu for at least the next week, probably. We're going to have all three of those guys out. So that's not good. Let's just hope that some other guys can step up. Next man up. I'm getting tired of saying it, but... Unfortunately, we do have to keep saying it. The next man up in the rotation is Jay Happ, and Jay Happ has been terrible this year. As you saw in the cold opening, I am not thrilled when he's on the mound. Jay Happ has been uh, missing his spots. He's been walking too many guys. He's been throwing the ball right down the middle. The only time that Jay Happ has pitched well with the Yankees, really well, is when they first acquired him in 2018. He went 7-0 down the stretch, but then, of course, he got ripped in the postseason by the Red Sox. Last year, he gets off to a rough start. He was having trouble locating that four-seam fastball. He tried to get away from it for a while. That didn't work. He went back to it at the end of the season with better results. Still not great results, but better results. And then he looked pretty good in spring training. Uh, but ever since we came back from this COVID delay, uh, he has not been sharp. He's been terrible his first two outings. Now, thankfully, the Red Sox are not a great hitting team. They have put up eight runs over the last two games against the Yankees, so that's that's not terrible. But uh, Jay Happ is going to have his work cut out for him. Uh, guys like J.D. Martinez hit lefties very well, so Happ is going to have to have his location, and he's going to have to step up. When you're losing guys out of the offense, the pitching really needs to step up. We've seen Garrett Cole get better and better. Paxton got better last night. He took maybe a half step back, not really a full step back. His velocity and stuff were good. But uh, he had trouble with his command, and that's just going to happen from time to time. He's not a, uh, you know, he's not a Cy Young type pitcher. He's a good pitcher, but occasionally you're going to have a bad night. So uh, let's take a look at what Jay Happ has done this year. It's not been pretty. What jumps out at me is his walk to strikeout ratio. He's made two starts. He's pitched seven total innings, but he's walked eight guys and only struck out three. That is not how that's supposed to go. He's got an 11.28 fielding independent pitching ERA. He's got a 43 ERA plus. So, I mean, obviously it's a small sample size, seven innings, right? But these numbers indicate that he's been about as bad as you can be and still be in the rotation. So uh, I have a feeling that if Hat does not put it together today, 
the Yankees may go in the next round uh, to either an opener, somebody like Jonathan Loisaga, or they might call up one of their young studs, one of these uh, Clark Schmitz or Davey Garcias, both guys throwing well at the alternate site. So, you know, we'll see how it works out, but uh, I am not confident about Jay Happ tonight. 10.29 ERA in 2020. Now, with all of the attention that Clint Frazier has been getting because of his hot start, and I'll get to more in a minute, uh, and Aaron Judge leading the league in home runs and then getting hurt, and, you know, how well DJ LeMahieu has played, and then Sanchez's struggles and Glaber's struggles, and now heating back up. It's been easy to lose how consistently good Gio Urshela has been. He's played great on defense, just terrific defense every single night nobody makes that play going in and towards the line as well as he does uh the, the best guy i've seen do that ever was scott brocious but Gio urshela is right up there with him he just makes that across the body throw so effortlessly and with such accuracy uh, i'm sure there are better third basemen in the major leagues but he's one of the best uh and i just love watching him play and you can see he's become a much better hitter since he came to the Yankees. He's using the whole field. He's driving balls to center field, to right field. He's ripping balls to left field. He's using the whole field, which is important as a hitter. If you watch my show, I talk about that all the time. Guys who can use the whole field, who can take that inside pitch and rip it to left or wait till the ball gets deep in the zone and drive it to right field with authority, those are the best types of hitters. Uh, a lot of the analytics guys thought that coming into this year, Gio Urshela might be one of those guys who sort of regresses a bit that last year could have been a fluke but if you listen to the Yankees scouts you know it's more than analytics that caused him to be great last year they made some good old-fashioned baseball adjustments he was not finishing his swing when he was with the Indians or the Blue Jays he was kind of hitting and, and letting go and if you played a lot of baseball you've all seen people who do this who kind of let go of the force of their swing at the point of impact. They're trying to meet the ball rather than trying to drive through the ball. Gio Urshela is driving through the ball right now. He's doing it with authority, and I just wanted to give him some respect. So you guys think Clint Frazier wants to go back down to the minor leagues? Because I don't. <laughs> uh, somebody commented uh, that the Yankees should get rid of Stanton and, uh, and have Clint Frazier play every day. Well... You don't need to get rid of Stanton because he's always on the injured list. Um, but even if the Yankees did want to get rid of Stanton, I don't think they could because he makes like $28, $29 million. I, I know that Miami's paying part of his salary. So I think the Yankees are on the hook for between $25 and $28 million. I can't remember exactly what the number is. For the next eight or nine years, you're not trading that contract for a guy who plays 15 games a year. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're not getting rid of John Carlos Stanton. But uh, Frazier is the perfect guy to have because he makes almost no money and he can fill in and play when John Carlos Stanton is hurt or when anybody else is hurt. Aaron Judge is hurt. Uh, he can fill in at DH. He can play the outfield. He looked better last night in the outfield. He made a diving catch and, you know, he was moving well. And I think if you support him with a really good center fielder so that way he doesn't have to approach the gaps as much, then maybe you can keep his defense under control. And he's got a pretty good arm. But uh, he's on fire. He's batting 636 this season. He's had extra base hits, I think, in every game. He's already got two home runs. He's got three doubles. He's driving in runs. Drove in five runs last night. So Clint Frazier does not want to go back to the minor leagues ever again. And I'm starting to think he won't. I'm starting to think he will not. Uh, I think you're more likely to see one of the extra guys, one of the Tyro Estradas or maybe a Tyler Wade, go back when some of these guys are ready to come off the injured list just because of how well he's hit. You can't send somebody down who gets a double and a home run every game. I just, I'm just, i sorry, you can't do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying watching Clint Frazier. I was not always the biggest Clint Frazier fan. When he first came up, I thought he was pretty good. His swing reminds me of Mike Trout, as silly as that sounds. If you watch the way he finishes, I'm going to use this pen because I don't have room for a bat. If you watch the way he finishes, he kind of he finishes here, and then he resets and points the bat almost out towards center field and that tells me that their swings are similar and they have similar mechanics i know that trout has a much bigger leg kick than clint frazier does but they both seem to have those quick hands and the same type of swing path that's just kind of up through the zone can take the ball to all fields so uh yeah i'm really liking uh watching clint frazier play this time around he's been terrific 
So more love for Clint Frazier and shout out to all the Clint Frazier fans. If you are a Clint Frazier fan and you want him to stick around on this roster after guys start to come back, let me know in the comments. A uh, quick update on Judge. He is going to start baseball activities on Monday. So it won't be long after that that he's ready to come back. Baseball activities, what is that? I mean, it's, it's basically taking fly balls, doing uh, moderate jogging on the, on the base paths. They're probably going to want him to run the bases a couple of times uh, before he comes back. They're going to tell him to run the bases at like, I don't know, 50, 60%. Did you feel anything? You wait a day or two. He does it again at like 85%. I mean, I wish it was easy to, to measure what percentage you're running at, but you say, don't go full out, go around the bases. If he says, hey, I don't feel anything, then you wait another couple of days, he's taking batting practice, he's throwing this whole time, and then you say, hey, go around the bases you know, as fast as you can, take regular live uh, fielding practice while batting practice is coming, You know, chase down balls. So I think you're looking at probably a week of baseball activities before he's back. If I'm going to guess, I'm going to target next Sunday for Aaron Judge's return. That would be just my baseball guess uh, from having watched for so many years. Uh, and I just wanted to give one more shout out to Johnny Lasagna. I know I mentioned him on the postseason, but or on the post game last night, but his stuff has been incredible. And his problem in the past has been staying healthy. If the Yankees can keep him healthy, and I think they can by using him out of the bullpen and watching how many days in a row you pitch him. If you notice, he hasn't pitched two days in a row. He pitches kind of like a starter, where it's once every four or five days, only out of the bullpen. And if you do that, he can be very effective. Just pick your spots within a you know two to three day window, and deploy him in that way, and he's going to get some big outs for you because he's 98 with the fastball, high spin rate, great curveball, great changeup, and he's short, so it comes at kind of a lower angle, lower plane than guys are used to. So. Uh, keep your eye out for Johnny Lasagna to move up the pecking order in big spots.